What is up, people? Okay, so we're here and we're here and like this. How are you guys doing this, Freddy? Trying out some new music. Let me know if it's too aggro. But I thought it's Friday, so we can go with some some metal. But if it's too much, let me know, and we'll we'll switch it immediately. Also, let me know if it's if it's too loud. Also, if you can hear me normally or whatnot. Let's see how many of you are actually here. Not here. There we go. Alright, doing the normal update. I started streaming today and I actually forgot to press like the actual stream button. It's so weird like YouTube has one button. And then there's another one in OBS. Kind of digging this music. Do you guys like it? What do you listen to when you when you code? If you listen to anything, something. And it looks like there's only one of you here. So, who are you? <laughs> what are you doing here? What are you listening to? version yet and by the way I think new fetch received an update or something I decided to show like how many packages are installed maybe I didn't notice it before Jesus Christ like 71,000 packages installed via via apt or apt or whatever and only a couple by uh, by the Nix user in fact if we go like Nix collect garbage and in the meantime we can go to our our shopping cart application and start it Not to waste some time. Well, we're actually going to do something cool today. We're not only going to uh, continue the rewrite, but we're also going to play with something cool because the idea was that, uh, you know, like I would do this rewrite in a week and then I'll make a video about it. And so uh, we're nowhere near that and they still need to make a video about something. And therefore, um, we, we need an alternative. And so we're going to play with some cool new tool and you guys are going to help me help me do that. And uh, if all goes well, I'll make a video about it. All right, so how's it doing? Okay, so deleted like a bunch of them. So let's see again, new fetch. Come on. Okay, that didn't do, that didn't do anything. All right, so uh, we are here. And uh, let me check again how many of you guys are here. Okay, two, that's good enough. Because again, like I, I messed I messed something up when I started the stream today. So uh, I was just like a bit a bit worried. Um, don't forget to hit the like button so that more people come. So uh, I'm not sure if you if you have been around um, since Monday, but we are rewriting the shopping cart application by Gabriel Wolf from the awesome book uh, Practical Functional Pro Fu ah, blah, blah, blah. Practical Functional Programming in Scala. And uh, the idea is to rewrite it to diamond architecture in the hope that it compiles faster. And so what we did so far is we took like one thing, like one use case, which is the user's auth, like the authentication. And uh, so this is the algebra, right? So we did like this thing. And uh, we, uh, we moved it up to core, which is like a new project. And like the only dependencies that it has is this gate, uh, which is just a facade, okay? So if we go to gate, it's still, it's still gonna be in core, right? We're still over here, it's like right next to it. And it's just a combination of a bunch of these other traits, right? Like these five, okay? And their implementations are all in an individual sub-project, okay? So we already have, uh, we already have the one for config, right? For this one, uh, we have the one for storage, 
which is this one. Uh, we have the one for crypto, which is this one. Uh, we still need to, to create one for tokens and we need to create one for um, Redis. All right. And there's actually something cool about Redis. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this because like the way the way we're going to initially implement it is that Redis is also going to have a dependency on Cersei to do some JSON stuff, but it's actually very unnecessary. And so there's like a potential uh, another box that is like um, lurking lurking there to um, to give us more you know faster compilation speed. And we also have you know one for inputs, right? So we have the delivery, right? So I stands for input, O stands for output, sort of like a request response kind of thing. So we're delivering our application via HTTP. We use HTTP for us uh, for us for this. So when a request comes in, we call something in the core. Core uses the gate behind the scenes. The gate is like split into all of these like things that are uh, compiled in parallel and we're good to go. Okay, so the plan for today is uh, we're gonna spend like one more hour on this and another hour on something else. And um, I haven't really decided what we're gonna do with this read. Like on one hand, I really wanna finish it. On the other hand, I cannot stream every day, you know, after a full-time job every day. Like nobody does that. So like I've been doing this since Monday and I'm kind of like burning out over here. So uh, I really want to finish the ride, but I don't know how or when, okay? Uh, but eventually, like, eventually we will we will finish it, okay? So today we're going to do crypto. I'm sorry, we did crypto already. We're going to do tokens and we're going to do, we're going to root Redis. And if we do it fast enough, then we're also going to rip out Cersei out of Redis, okay? So the first one is tokens. So let's go into tokens and we only need to do like create token. Right, which gives us like an F of JWT token. Um, I don't like this song. So um, let's go to the initial uh, algebra, which is like this one, and let's see what it did like tokens create. Okay, so it did like over here, like tokens dot create. So it doesn't even have any params. Uh, let's go and see how it does this. Okay, create, and for this it uses like genuid, and I believe we already stole it. Genuid, yeah, we already have it over here. That's nice. However, Look at that, it's in persistence, okay? So this is like one of the problems, so we're gonna need to move it out. Luckily, UUID is part of the standard library, so we'll need to move it out. Um, then it uses uh, JWT expire, which comes from, okay, it's our thing, and it uses JWT clock, which is also our thing. All good, all good. Uh, hold on, what does it do? New JWT clock, yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, there's some cats. Yeah, that's fine. That's not a big deal. Okay, it also uses clock from Java time. Okay, that's interesting. All right, so this is fine. We can just steal it. Uh, this thing is just a config. Uh, that's also fine. And it needs a to token expiration. We already have a token expiration. Okay, so it seems like we should be able to just go and grab it. Uh, we'll need like, yeah, so as you can see, like there's like JSON stuff happening over there, um, which, which might be fine for this stuff. Like previously I was talking about Redis, right? So this is tokens. Okay. So JWT claim is in PDI.JWT. Okay. So we need to figure out where this comes from. Um, so if we go to dependencies and we search for JWT, it's, well, no. Hold on, PDI? No. Mm. Uh, I don't know where it comes from. Oh, this is like movie music. Um, it's the first time that I'm using this music. Let me let me check if it's all actually good. If I didn't get like any like content claim stuff. All right, so far so good. No content claim emails. Um, okay, so where is that thing? Where is that thing? PDI.JWT. So it looks like it's a Scala library. That that tool that we're playing with today is actually going to help us answer like exactly exactly these um, these kinds of questions. Um, PDI. Hmm, interesting. Do you guys see it anywhere here? Okay, 
I guess maybe it should go like this. So there's cats, 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 Cersei, Cyrus, this is a config there, or Java X crypto. Maybe it's part of crypto. Why would JWT be part of crypto? It's probably it has to be there. Probably it's transit it transitively comes from this guy. Anyhow, uh we should be fine, I believe. Uh let's go back uh again. So let's go to create. So JWT secret is going to come from this HTTP library. Mm, this is fine. It's it's so it's so like it's a little bit like too much entangled for my taste. Uh, because like this JWT library is built on top of HTTP for us, but whatever. Um, and then we're doing JWT encode. Where does that come from? What? Okay, so from that library. Okay. And then we have like JWT algorithm. Okay, this comes from this PDI thing. All right, fine. So. How are we gonna call it? So, so we need to go like start and um, we need to create like one of those, right? So we need to go like this, right? And we need to call it somehow, right? So we need to call it like, what are we gonna call it? Like tokens or JWT, all right? So let's do like tokens. And also let's put like JWT so that people can like, like we, if we search for JWT, we should be able to just like go find it. And so like usually I would like put the library name, but I'm still not sure which library it is, so. Um, for now, we're just gonna go with like PDI, right? Whatever that, whatever that thing was. Okay, so find C, go like this. All right, so we probably don't need crypto. I guess I saw something about cat's effect. I don't remember. Yeah, whatever. We're just gonna leave it. Um, all right, so let's go like grab this whole thing as we usually do and just like paste it over here and then like figure out what we need okay like this okay so no 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 okay we might need Cersei but we have core what do we have oh we don't have okay so we need Cersei okay so we need Cersei core generic parser refined yeah whatever uh config we don't need config we have a project for config uh this one we might need might need FS2 probably not HTTP like so we're gonna need this one probably this was this profunctor thing I don't think that we're gonna need crypto I don't think that we're gonna need logging I don't think that we're gonna need blah blah redis refined we already have that skunk for sure not squants yeah again I, I don't think that we're gonna need crypto Let's leave it like this. It should be it should be fine for now. Uh, not now. Let's go here. Uh, let's go like this. Let me check how many of you guys are here. I need to figure out a way to like see how many of you are here. Just to that's good enough because other people have probably better things to do on a Friday. All right. And pour some water. Let's just go and see if we can compile stuff. Compile. Come on, help me type with one hand. Oh yeah, I, I cleaned at the end of the at the end of the previous video because I wanted to see how fast it compiles without the test. Because like in the first video, we compiled with the test and it was like 67 seconds. And now that this thing takes forever, I don't think that we'll get around to like uh, moving the test as well. And so I compiled it without the test and without the test, I think it was 57 seconds. And so uh, this is what we're fighting against. In any case, we don't need to wait for it to compile. Um, the build loads, so we're gonna import the build. Okay, so this means that we have now this thing, tokens JWTPDI. Okay, and the goal is to um that happens sometimes. The goal is to implement uh where was it? Gate uh tokens. Right, so we just want to implement this tiny trait, which has this like create token. Okay. So 
uh, once this thing finishes compiling, uh, building, which, uh, you know, importing the build, which is taking forever because, okay, this one finished compiling. Okay, so it should finish, like, very soon. Okay, I think I even didn't manage to click on it. All right, so that's a very gloomy song. Uh, get out of here. So uh, we're going to go with new file. And I need to open some of the file because otherwise I will mistype again something here. Okay, so we are in JWT token over here. So we go like new file and we go source main Scala dev inside you. We're still in choppy. We're still only concerned about users auth. Like everything we're doing is just for this use case. So it's very, very specific. Only later once we see that we need it in some other use case, we will uh, move it up. Okay, so uh, this is what uh, this is like tokens uh, imp impl uh, that's called. All right, so as always, we go like this, uh, whoops, like this, like that, and we're gonna go like object tokens, tokens implementation. I'm just gonna have like, whoa, no, 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 no. okay, so uh, make for some F as always. It's really hard to type. Uh, we're just gonna produce tokens of f uh, like this, and metals is going to help us uh, with like new tokens of f. Okay, these songs are not great. Uh, all right, so we're gonna go like this, and we're gonna go with a lazy valve that code all right so we have create token so this is going to be our thing we're gonna put it like somewhere here and we need to steal it from here and here okay so we need um, I'm not a big fan of like having like so many algebras for no for no reason, but fine. Okay, so we're, first we're just gonna go like uh, with genuid. Okay, so this is like the first thing that we need, and we already have it. Like this is not ours. Like ours is in persistence. Okay, and so it only needs like uid, and it needs like cat's effect sync. And, uh, like, ideally, we would, like, move it up into some uh, comments library. And we will in just a second. Um, which is which kind of unfortunate because I didn't want to do it now, but fine. Okay. So, we have an issue that... Why did he even do it like that? So, if you give it a sync... Then we're gonna delay it. Well, yeah, sure, we need a sync. Like, this is a regular, like, make, but it's implicit. In any case, so the thing is that, like, um, the Postgres DB uses it, right? And now we also need it over here. And there's, like, no common project that also has gets effect, right? Um, and so, like, the diamond architecture pretty much says, okay, well, create, like, a util box thing. And um, we will. Right now, I don't want to. I want to. Yeah, whatever. Let's go and create it. Let's go and create it. I'm just creating boxes like there's no tomorrow. Okay, so this one will be, so like the common things, I like to have them at the top. So this is O, this is O, this is I, and this is core. Okay, so it needs to be here. Okay. So uh, it's silly to come up with a name. So we're just going to call it like oof, Cat's Effect util okay and over here it's gonna be a C okay so it's gonna be like cats effect util because like the only thing that it needs is cats effect okay so it's just gonna be like that like this all right um, 
Uh, we still have his BT, so let's go reload real quick. All right. And so now we go into persistence, right? And we say that it also depends on... By the way, I saw recently that we can actually do this in one thing. Let me try this real quick. Like that, and like that. I just want to see if it's compiled. It doesn't. All right. But at least we can do... Like, I just saw that we can do this, like, in one thing, like this. So we should be able to do... Uh, how did I call it? Uh, gets effect util, right? So we'll just yank around this thing, go back here and and mark the whole thing and just do like that and let's see uh there should be a comma over here and like this and like that and like that and find a comma and like that and also like that all right like this let's see if sbt is happy with this okay i'm done with this music um Let's go with something funky. Hi fi. There you go. Much nicer. How many of you are here? Still two. Nice. Alright, so it loads and it compiles. Okay, so we're gonna grab this thing and so we're gonna say that uh this thing that we just created, like that one, you know, that it also has like a dependency on it. Okay. Cool. And so we compile. It's all good. Okay. So now if we go like import the build, we should be able to get our like Gen UID thing, uh, which is like uh, here. No, that's not ours. Gen UID. This one. Okay, so as you can see, it's already like at the like dev inside you level. It just said like it happens that you know we also need it somewhere else, and so like this cat's effect util is going to need this directory, right? So we're gonna go like uh, new folder, new folder. Okay, so it's gonna be like source main Scala dev inside you like this, and check it out. Like uh, it's important. Like I want to show you like where it's used. Come on, escape. Alright, hold on. Let, let me let me make this one compiler real quick. I'm gonna well hold up. Can I do now? To shut up. Um annotation no one. There you go. Okay, so um uh, so where's our genuity? Which is in persistence. Okay, so let's see where where it's used. Okay, so as you can see, it, it's used over here. Okay, so this one. I just want to show you that if we if we grab it like this, right, and we just like drag it into here, right, then it's still gonna compile, right, because we set it up in such a way. Um. Here, look, like I'm saving this file and it's all still good, right? And so now it's like a common thing that we can reuse. But we didn't like move it into core because core was the only one thing. No, we just created like an extra thing. In fact, uh, you know what we should do? We should uh, definitely go like this. Bloop and... How's it, how's it called? Hold up. How's our, how is, how is our aggregate thing called? Uh, shopping cart okay so we can go like this right so we don't need the shopping cart like this okay and so we have this dependency graph that we can now preview okay okay so like this is our new stuff right so we have our core 
and like delivery depends on it config depends on it cryptography depends on it and now we have this new thing which is like this cat's effect util which depends on core which i accidentally did it does not need to depend on core why did you guys not tell me right so over here like it has no business depending on the core okay import changes like these graph tools are super super helpful like this is still like the old stuff you know oh there's actually uh, uh, there's also one called roots we also need to like remove this one so we also need uh to go like this right so sed will just like replace you know root we'll just like delete root okay did we finish importing come on finish importing okay, we finished importing okay so we can go like this okay and now this thing is much much prettier okay so as you can see like we have like we have two projects here like this one that we're building the new one that has like all the dependencies on the core and now we have like this cat's effect to like compiling in parallel you know that only has like this genuine UID and like this is the old stuff okay and it it has like everything in one thing and only like tests depending on it okay so we have like already one two three four well well one two three well let's say five things compiling in parallel because like this one as i mentioned in the in the actual videos uh you know it it has only one file okay so let's see if we're compiling by the way um just like in case you know compile we still should be good la 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 yeah we're still compiling okay escape compile all right so we should also go and um, check out close others okay so uh we need to go to uh token tokens no like token yeah token impl and tokens okay so um i'll pretty much like I'll pretty much just like grab this thing okay and go just like paste it like this okay uh, it's just called create token okay like this All right cool uh, so first of all we're gonna need like you know cats and like cats uh, not cats fact like cat syntax all and we're going to require that it's uh what is it like so yeah so we now we need like genuine id and the monad thing okay like this now like this okay and as you can see like genuine id compiles right because we have access to okay so we need like jwt expire and over here it comes from it comes from here like i don't mm, i really don't like it like this Let's do it like this for now, and then we'll see what we can do about it. Come on, find a column and just do it like this. No, not like that, like this. That's what I meant. Okay, like that and uh, like that. Okay. So now it says, okay, we don't have like well, well, any of these things. Well, that's fine. So uh, the first one is this one. We're just gonna go like grab it, and this is just a non-empty string. We don't need any of these things for now. Just gonna grab it like this. Go like that. Like for now, let's just like throw it over here. Uh, non-empty string comes from refined, and I really prefer to do like all like that, and go to like this string and go like this okay so we have this we have this uh which we got lucky right token expert how do we have this okay maybe we don't have this okay so jwt expire is the thing that we need okay so let's go and see jwt expire uh blah 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 whatever 
and that goes to like GWT clock. Okay. Okay, so it's time to like steal stuff. So like again, like as long as we don't need to like move it into cat's effect, like as long as we need it like only here, we're just gonna like copy it to only here, right? So just gonna go like this. Uh like maybe we'll like put it like into dev inside, you know, like this. So that later we can like because it's very, very likely that we're using this thing somewhere else, right? So dev inside. Okay. And so like this thing now uh, compiles a little bit more, which we don't notice because we still didn't grab this. Okay, so now we have this one. So now let's go grab that one. Same thing, put it like under dev inside you. And go like this, like dev inside you. Okay. So we should not need these imports. Okay, so we don't have token expiration. Uh, because token expiration right now is under dev inside your shoppy users authentication package. And we are in dev inside you. Maybe maybe this should not be in dev inside you then. Maybe this whole thing should be like under under users and auth. Yeah, I mean again like the same thing, like let's move it let's move them all in there. Okay. So we're just gonna go like this and just like get these guys and like go in here and you know go like that and over here uh where's the other one jwt expire jwt clock you know i'll go like this as well whoa that didn't work like this and go like that and ta-da okay so this one is happy this one is happy so these ones compile okay so jwt claim is probably yeah this pdi thing so so we were right with one of our dependencies Okay, so yeah, we pretty much can just like at this point just go and grab the grab the imports from here. We have these ones. Let's go grab these ones and go to our like tokens implementation. And well, go like well, go like this, right? Okay, so th this probably comes from the fact that uh, like this token is a JWT token from, from that fancy library, right? Yeah, see, like, we have a different JWT token. Uh, like, this is, like, one of those things where, uh, you know, you could work with parametric types, or, like, in this case, like, we're just going to go, like, the lazy route, and we're just going to go and produce, like, a JWT token, which is ours, uh, by getting, like, the token dot value out, like this. And we just need to make sure that this one is, um, is, where is ours? Shopee users auth. So it should have, I thought it would have precedence. Let's try this. Uh, required what? Hold on, which one? So if we go here, the tokens like this JWT token is ours, right? Okay, and so okay, let's let's do the whole thing. Dev inside do shoppy users on. Okay, found you. Ah, okay, so this is the issue over here, right? Well, this is annoying, so let's go like this for now. Like, this is a sign that we're, we should not be doing this, but let's go like this. Yeah. And so now, like, this thing doesn't do anything. Okay, so you should never, you should never do this. You should never need to go like this, right? Because, like, we're already over here. And I don't like rename imports, especially when you have to rename like your own things. So over here, like if we go like this, then we don't we only don't find the JWT secret key. So we sort of got lucky and like I think it's acceptable to just go like this. 
Right, oh, we also need a JWT encode. Okay, so let's go, let's go like this. Okay, and over here go JWT, and over here go JWT, like that. And so now we don't need to do this whole thing. Okay. Okay, problem solved. Okay, so I don't like the fact that that we have these dependencies. Not like a big deal, but it's a bit annoying. Yeah. So, well, it, it, it kind of is a big deal. So we're going to type boxes for like 10 minutes. How long have we been streaming? 36 minutes. Man, this goes so slow. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to like whip it like this. How many, how many of you guys are still here? Don't forget to hit the like button is so uh, so that this stream gets recommended. Okay, so what I want to do is like I never I never want these things, you know. So the idea is that the core manages all of this stuff, right? So essentially, I would want to like like this one for example like should probably be here the same as like JW, you know, gen, gen UID. So if you go to like JWT expire, like I'm sure, uh, you know, so this is like not ours, right? So this is the one that we just stole. Like I'm sure that if we go to the implementation, come on, implementation. Okay, so Metal fails to go to the to implementation and usually it fails when the only implement, implementation is like the synonymous class, right? So there's never another instance for this thing. And so I'm just going to go and I will say that it's totally fine to go like this. Uh, like, see, like we're raising a JDID with F. Hey, man. Thank you. My name is Vlad. You can call me Vlad. Dev inside is fine as well. Do whatever you want. You can call me Susan if it makes you happy. Um, so what I want to do is I want to go and put this JWT expire thing here as well okay and then over here we're just gonna get it out you know, JWT expire of F right, so it's gonna work like the same as you know gen UID thing okay so now it's gone uh, what up does not take parameters oh no it does it totally does it was an F oh it doesn't have it doesn't have a summoner okay yeah, yeah, so it doesn't have a summoner, so we're just gonna go and uh, create one real quick. Def apply for some F. Okay, so if it if it has a JWT expire, well, then we're going to give it an F of JWT X. Well, no, we're gonna give it like a JWT expire of F. And how we're we gonna do this? Well, implicitly like that okay so this is called a summoner and so now this thing compiles okay and so now like this config and ex exp uh are weird right like like so so i'm not sure if it's if it's easy for you guys to follow because um let, let me show you the problem i'm not sure if i can show you the problem with this dependency graph um preview Okay, so we have a core over here, and and it says like, hey, like it needs one dependency. It says like, hey, I want a, I want a gate, and the gate is just a facade for like all of these things. I don't want like, I don't want like weird things. I don't want to like to need weird things, or like too many things to construct them. Okay, for example, like when you're constructing a database, like all I want to need. Is like some session pool that's all i don't want like extra like utils or whatever the same thing was this like when i'm constructing this i don't want to have crazy things because otherwise like my dependency injection is gonna go like nuts right i want it to be simple to construct these right this is how i'm constructing my gate i'm putting my gate inside of the core this is how i get the boundary to the core and i give this i give this boundary to this delivery application and that's it okay 
So the first one is going to be super simple, right? So we're going to change the signature of this, right? So we're going to go like, this is going to be a def, okay? And like this token, okay, over here, right? It's going to go in here. And I'm, t I'm, I'm starting with a token uh, because, because I know that in the core, we just happen to already have the token, okay? So now like this doesn't compile because we changed the signature, okay? So uh, we need to go back to, uh, well, we need to like yank around the params. We need to go up real quick, okay? And we need to paste it over here, okay? Notice how, um, how this thing like almost compiles, right? Because this is a facade, so we need to go up. We need to go up like this, okay? Uh, by the way, I forgot to put like an override thing over here. Um, okay, and it goes like, how to generate this dependency graph. Uh, I'll show you in a second. Um, okay, so I forgot like an override over here. Okay, and over here and over here and um, yeah. So notice that this thing, this thing compiles, right? And it compiles because it just like, we sort of got like, I mean, I, I had it in the back of my head, but like this token expiration thing, it already exists in core. Right, so we're in them inside the Shopee users, right? And I just remember that our boundary, it already has it, you know? Like I remember like at the bottom, we had this get token expiration thingy, right? So this thing is already an F of, you know, token expiration, okay? And so over here, when we, when we call create token, well, we can just give it a token expiration, right? And so like, why would we like load this config, you know, and give it like once to the core, and one so that thing that the core needs anyway. So the core might as well like, you know, navigate through this whole thing. Okay. So this is like already nice. Why does it complain at the top? Uh, ah, yeah, over here. So it's kind of nice. So now we need to like swap these and we need to give it like the token expiration. Okay. So this part was super easy, right? So let me show you how to hold up like this thing compiles now, right? Um, so the, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do this, the same thing like was this, right? Basically the same thing. We're just going to like throw it through the, through the, through the rings and it's going to come in, it's going to come in like over here. Okay. So, uh, about the dependency graph. So I'm using metals and, um, metals these days, uh, can either use bloop as the backend server or, um, or SBT. And, uh, I believe it can also use like mail directly. I don't, I'm not sure. Anyway, so, um, if you have the Bloop CLI, which you can install with Corsair, right? Like this was, you know, Bloop, right? Like this. By the way, uh, today Bloop uh, 150 came out. Uh, so if we do like Bloop about, we're actually going to see that we're using Bloop 1413. And this is because Metals was not updated yet. Usually when Bloop comes out, like a couple of days later, Metals comes out. So I'm pretty sure like this weekend, like, prophecy you know this weekend or like monday a new metals version is going to come out and it's going to use bloop one one four thirteen okay so if i were to like uh kill bloop okay and i would start it again you know by doing just bloop about you're going to see that i actually have one five zero installed okay and um see like it's now one five zero and it's talking to to Zink. and so if i go over here and i say you know reconnect uh let me actually show you the logs first uh, where is it? Oh, oh, we're already there. Okay. So if I go like recompile, uh, reconnect to, um, how is it? Metals. Let's try build server. Restart build server. No. Build, disconnect, connect to build server. Okay. So now it will try to connect to this 150. Now, I don't know if it's going to work. Right, so it's connecting to Wi-Fi one five zero, and maybe we're gonna start like running into issues. And if we start running into issues, we're gonna like we're, get, we're just gonna like stop the the old one, and uh, and you know and, and ask Metals to reconnect again. Uh, like when I made the video about Bloop, like I, I pointed this out that sometimes like Bloop and Metals are like a little bit out of sync. And in fact, you can go into settings for Metals. I'm always derailing stuff, uh, things. Um, so if you go to like extension settings. Like I never recommend you guys to do this, right? But if you go over here, you can you can actually specify the blue version, right? So you can say like, even if you like restart metals or whatever, you can say, hey, I actually have 150 locally installed, but don't do this, you know? Just use like, wait wait until metals updates. Like I'm doing this like for now, just, just for fun, okay? So let's actually like recompile the whole workspace, whatever. 
yeah, so see, like, it's the first time, blah, blah, blah. Like, maybe we'll run into some issues because maybe they, they broke some compatibility. In any case, so if you have the, whoa. That's interesting. Does this mean that it didn't work? I'm sure it will be fine. Again, like if we're not fine, we're just going to restart the restart server. Okay, so if you're using the Bloop CLI, it actually has a command. Uh, where was it? Bloop. Here. Okay, so you can list, list the projects, right? So if you just do, uh, let me just run this thing real quick. So if you just do like Bloop projects, right? It's going to like list them all like this, okay? And if you do like uh, Bloop projects, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, blue project dot dot graph it's going to produce like this thing right and you can you can like pipe this thing uh into dot which comes from uh what's it called graph i think graph yeah so you can go like pseudo app and so graph right and you can like pass it to dot with some parameters like i think this is like target svg or something like this i'm not sure and then i would put it into like dependency graph svg and this is just stuff where i'm like saying you know delete like the test projects and delete like the shopping cart project and delete the root project because i know that it's just gonna like pollute stuff and then like what i'm doing is like so here we go like this is generated now and so if i go into the dependency graph over here, I have a plugin for VS Code that can just like preview SVGs because otherwise if you open it, it's just code, you know, SVGs code. So if you go preview SVG, then um, somewhere it's open, maybe I should close it. Uh, preview SVG, there you go, okay. So now it's here. And uh, we can go like this and like that. And you see that we have like, two new projects, right? Basically, we're, we're having like two projects in this one. It's like this old thing and now this new thing, right? Where we have like the core at the top of the diamond. Everything else depends on the core module of this like cat spec util thingy that we just, we just created. All right, so uh, if we run into any issues with Bloop, remind me that I just, uh, you know, that I started using this one. I have some weird like hair on my microphone. There we go. I think it's cool. All right, so uh, we wanted to go back to tokens, okay? And we wanted to say that uh, this is not this is not our tokens, tokens tokens implementation. So we wanted to have this thing come in uh, over here, right? So before we do this, we will actually like move this thing, move this thing out. So it's just. Um, so because like the because it needs to go through the core, like this type needs to exist there now. All right. So we need to go over here and it's totally fine if we like put it under auth. <laughs> it's fine. Put it under auth. Oh the hair is still here. Um hold up. It bothers me like a lot. Okay, hold up. This is quality content, people. Okay, so we're gonna go like new Scala file and it's gonna be a case class and we're gonna call it JWT access token key config, like this, okay? And we're just gonna like grab it like this and we're gonna go like this and uh, yeah, we're gonna import that. Uh, all uh, dot underscore like that, like that. And also, let's go like this, like that, like that. And now, we should we should get a compilation error here. I'm expecting compilation compilation error here because we already have it. David says you should be users off. I think Metal's is confused. Like, wish it should produce a compilation error. How does it work? David says you should be users off. Dev inside your shopy users off. JWT access token key config. JWT access token key config. I copy pasted it, right? Copy. Copy paste. All right. I will clean. I don't want to clean everything because we have like, like every time I clean, we also compile like this big ball of mud. So I want to go into. Uh, token token jwt pdi uh clean 
and compile. Come on, it has to fail. Anyway, I don't know why it doesn't fail. It should fail. Scala is weird like this. Okay. So as you can see, like it still compiles because clearly that type is already, you know, it already exists. Okay. So uh, let's remove it from here. Let's go like this. Let's go like that. Let's go like that. Let's go like that. And there we go. Okay. So now we have like two things here. Uh, we can do that like this. And we can like just copy this thing. So now we need to go back to tokens. Come on, like this to tokens, go like this. It's not an override anymore. And remove this thing, uh, copy that, uh, go to the next arrow by pressing F8, go like that. Uh, this is an override, we need an equals sign at the end. And there we go, almost, 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 and first try. Okay, so this thing compiles now, today please. Oh, it doesn't, it, it cannot compile because the boundary doesn't compile. So we need to go and, um, uh, yank it. And this is actually an interesting part, right? So now we need to go to our has config thing. I remember like our has config only loads our config. And so now we will, we will say that. Uh, our config and by the way notice that we actually have like this entire thing there already what a big coincidence right so i don't want to call it config i'm gonna call it uh jwt access token key config right like this okay so maybe we can actually uh uh reduce the the um, the signature a little bit right so maybe we can just go here and we can say, hey, we need the entire config. Now, I don't want to do this because like if the config keeps growing, right? So if the core needs to like distribute it, distribute like values from the config, then, uh, you know, uh, we're going to demand things that we don't need. Um, but honestly, probably like in production, I would do this anyway. It's like whatever, you have access to the whole config because it's not like the whole config of the entire application. It's just a config for this particular use case. So it's not a big deal that it's gonna have access to like a couple more fields that it doesn't need, okay? So um, we're actually gonna go like like this, right? So it's just gonna say config config, which is a very beautiful code, okay? It's not gonna compile for a bit. So uh, we need to go and fix all of this stuff, right? So over here, we're just gonna go config config. And uh, over here, we're gonna go uh, config, config. Config. Okay, next error, uh, which is over here. So we don't have the token expression anymore because over here, like this thing is going to be pretty much like gate.config, okay? So we're just gonna remove this thing. Well, should we? Yeah, like this, okay? So this thing is going to be config now. And this is going to be, you know, gate.config, okay? And over here, we're gonna go config.token, token expression, that was useless, VS Code. Oh yeah, create token just requires the entire config now. Okay, so this one is like this, right? And this one is like config.token expression. Okay, there's only like something at the bottom, which, uh, yeah, so we also need to like, you know, uh, you know, gate.config, same thing. Like this is now a config. Now uh, this thing um, is gonna go like config. Okay, and so now over here, uh, okay, over here, we need to continue with the entire config, okay? So we need to go like this, and like this is going to be config config. And by the way, it's so beautiful because we have like these dedicated namespaces and so all of the use cases will have a config that is called config because we don't have like this uh, thing. Uh, yo, what do you prefer most, Z layer or D stage? Neither actually, I'm I'm very happy with uh, with constructors. Uh, I, have, I haven't used the stage actually, so I don't know if it's any good. Okay, so this thing needs a config and this thing only needs like config dot expiration. Ta-da, first try. Okay, this thing is almost happy. Um, okay, so this is not, so, how do we call it? So it's like config dot, like JWT thing, right? 
like this and this one is like config dot uh token express okay ta-da and so now we we drastically reduced the dependency injection for for this uh, for this module right so constructing this thing is now much easier okay because it's probably it's, it's going to be like this right so you load the config you say assemble this entire dependency graph okay and you're just going to give the config to core and the core is going to distribute it to all of these things right so you don't need to like pass it like several times even though it wouldn't be a big deal, but it is a big deal in the signatures and like passing it around all the time. Okay, so I'm very happy with how it ended up. Man, this takes so much time, like everything. Uh, all right, so let's see what I did. Okay, let's let's just go and whip this whole thing. Uh, by the way, this is like undo a work in progress commit, right? So it, so it searches for a last commit which contains the work in progress and if like the last commit is you know the work in progress commit it just removes it okay so it doesn't exist anymore okay so i'm just gonna go like day five all right so um let me see how how long i have been streaming okay an hour mm. man we're so close you know and by the way we need to remove jason here all right so we also need like uh to do remove dependency on JSON. Okay. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Because I need to be able to use a different JSON library. All right, just because I'm dealing with JWT tokens, which is like a web concept, doesn't mean that I need to be bound to Cersei. So I really wanted to go and also do Redis, right? And then we would be like done with this um, with this use case, and maybe we would be able to even like go and assemble it. Um, in fact, this is what we're gonna do. So we're gonna go and assemble it, and just like at the point where it needs Redis, uh, we're going to say that uh, you know we don't have it yet, right? So we're just gonna like throw an exception because I, I really it's Friday, you know. I want to play with something really cool, and uh, yeah, so. Uh, let's, uh, so I just did this comment, right? So I'm just going to shove it into my previous commit, right? Again, like gcan, gcan is like this thing, right? It just does like get at all and then get commit man, no edit, no verify. Just like throw whatever I just did in the previous commit. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to create our main for the first time, right? So again, like we're almost ready to assemble it. Um... I wanna I wanna find one with um, where's our util like this one. So I'm gonna copy this one. Okay. So I'm gonna go. Let me actually show you the dependency graph real quick. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to we're going to have a main here at the bottom, and it it, it needs dependency and dependencies on all of them, right? On this one, and 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 also like in the future, the one for Redis, and like transitively, it's going to have a dependency on the core and also on the cat's effect tutorial. So this is the apex of the diamond, and um, let's go create it. This is like where the dependency injection is going to be. Okay, so it's going to be like like here, right? Like this. So this is going to be like this. So it's going to be the main. And uh, so the main doesn't have like any letter, right? So it's just going to be like this. Okay, and it's on the layer three. And it should not like, well, if you do integral this final, it, uh, it should only have like the dependency on the effect type that we're going to inject. In this case, like we're injecting like cat's effect, so we're gonna go with the same effect type. So we actually don't need like anything over here. Uh, however, we do need. Hold on, it's weird. Which one did I copy? I thought I copied the one with the cat's effect util. Oh, yeah, I did, but that's not the one that I should have copied. I wanted to copy the one that has a dependency on. Depends on this one, right? Because we're gonna need like a bunch of these. And by the way, we should, we should not, like, I always forget this. We should um, add, like, all of these into this uh, aggregate thingy. Mm. 
Oh, by the way, I want one more thing that I want to try. Here, right? I should have gone like this, right? Like I tried it, right? I should have just gone like, like map and now like CC, TT, okay? And then just like, just like, like that, okay? So that we have like this var args adoption. By the way, in Scala 3, it got a little bit better. You, you don't need this underscore. I believe this is how they did it in Scala 3. Okay, so I should be able to go like this and and like that uh not now okay so it should look like this let's see if if we're good here compile yeah it's happy with that one okay so we're gonna go with like the same thing uh at the bottom so we're gonna go here like this like that like that no no where's the oh depends on like that okay it looks a bit weird but whatever okay so we don't need the core we don't need the cat's effect too we actually need like all of our guys over here okay and, and this is like usually where i make like a lot of typos so let's see so we need the i so this is how we deliver our application http http for us we need the o config file that uses service. We need the o uh, cryptography jsr one hundred five horrible name API. Whoever created this clearly had no idea about marketing. Okay, um, persistence db Postgres skunk. Okay. And this one is going to be tokens, JWT, PDI, okay? And like uh, Redis stuff. Okay, to do, okay. So let's see first if, uh, if we can just do compile. I have a setting, remember we added it like, yeah, I, I always do this. Uh, yeah, so the projects, they actually don't, don't contain these letters. Okay, so it's like this. It's only the directories that contain these letters. Um, did I not call it like this? Uh, PD, PDI, not PDF. See, like I, like I told you, like I've done this so many times. Like I always, I always make like typos. Right, so we're good here. And so I, I don't want to forget, like I always forget to add this to this aggregates thing. Aggregate, yeah. So see, we have like these guys. Okay. Like these ones, oops. And this one also needs the uh, cat's effect util, right? It's uh, it's this one, okay? So this time, like th this way, like when we say like compile, it will go and like um, compile everything, okay? So it's just like gonna like spread this this thing um, to the others, to the other sub projects. Mm, did I forget the comma? Here, yeah. Whoa, I forgot the comma. There we go. This is why I always like stay in this BT. Like as soon as this BT is happy, uh, then I go and import the build into Bloop. Oh, 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 okay. Like, how is it possible that this happened? Not enough arguments. Has config. Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, like this has nothing to do with what we just did. Um. That's interesting that SBT just was it's just like, yeah, bye-bye, it doesn't compile. Really? Really? In any case, this has nothing to do with the build. It's just that I forgot to um, to fix that Cyrus thing, right? Because we said uh, config, source, blah, 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 shoppy, user auth, right? Because like this thing now needs to have more things, right? So we need like these two, okay? And how am I gonna do this? Uh, like that. And just like paste them over here. Uh, remove this stupid cat. Okay, so the token expiration is, uh, okay, so this is like, come on. 
uh, delete until here and find the column and paste it over here. Okay. And this thing, uh, we will actually need the type and uh, I will need to look up. Oh, now we won't be able to do the pure F thing. Let's for now do the pure F thing and just do like, you know, this is a bug. Sort of like this, okay? It needs to be like equals and like uh, to do. Okay. So let's go like null. For okay. So uh, I need to go and see how it's like uh, dot as JWT axis here. Okay. So this is how it's done. Uh, like this and we need to put it over here like like that yeah good enough so it's like this okay and it's like that okay actually this is not so simple because like this thing okay so this env thing loads Oh wow, config that. Whoa, 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 whoa. So like this thing, I want to see like what is this because it's. Show me the type. Come on, show me the type. Great. Uh, okay. So first of all, we need to get get this like env thing. Where does it come from? Okay, so it just comes from Cyrus. Okay, so we just need to, what? We just need to import Cyrus? Okay, that's interesting. So we just go like this, import Cyrus, like that. Okay, so now it goes, could not find a place of effort for deco decoder. Okay, we need a config decoder. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So this is an important thing. Like this JWT access token key config thing, it lives now in the core. And over there, we don't know anything about Cyrus. So we need to figure out a way to uh, to generate a decoder for it, and I've never played with Cyrus. Um, and the way like uh, we did it, like the way that uh, Gabriel did it, is was um, like he did an extension for uh, Derivo. Uh, okay, so JWT access key config. Okay, like this. Okay, so he did like this, like config decoder. Okay, and this config decoder is that thing, and uh, we already stole it uh, at some point, right? But I have no idea how to use it. Like, I have no idea how to use it, like... Uh, let's just go check the documentation for Cyrus real quick. I hope it's not a big deal, you know. Um, uh, Cyrus, Kala, get home. Is that it? Yes, documentation. Yeah. Yeah, like it has like all of these tools. Configurations. Yeah, so you just go like this. And it needs decoders. Where is the dec oh, decoders? There we go. Okay, sort of like as a hack for now, I just want to go like with this, this thing, because I just want to like get it to compile first and then we can do like better. Okay, so we're just gonna go like this and just gonna paste it over here. Okay, so what we're doing is, okay, like string comes in and we need this, what the hell was the time? Chain WT access. Uh, token key config. 
like this. Come on. Like that. Okay, so we go like, well, just string, string, and, um, oh, it needs to be non empty, I think, right? Yeah. So this needs to be. Wow. Type name, wow. That's interesting. Okay. And so now we will, what was the return type of this thing? It's a config decoder. Okay, so I guess we will also need to map it into like, I'm just, I'm just guessing, right? So this is gonna be like the value and, well, we'll probably should be able to do Oh, is this apply? Yeah, so probably we should be able to go like this. Just guessing. So I guess it's a map. Okay, maybe it's not, maybe it's, uh, it's actually the contra map, right? Uh, what the hell is it called? C map? I don't remember. Uh, okay, so what can we do with this thing? Config decoder. It's as it has collect. Contra map, that's what I was looking for. Uh, contra map. Come on, just compile, man. Missing area if I miss apply an object and apply it. Okay, so I can't like I don't I don't understand like how does this thing was like this apply thing, right? In the in the here. Like what is this apply thing? Oh it's that thing. It's the thing that takes like an end and produces a positive positive end. Okay. So I need to go and uh, I understood now. Okay, so it's gonna be like this like non empty string that apply. Which comes from refined. Like that. Uh, oh. Man, it's like one of those things, it was supposed to take like a couple of minutes. Um, maybe we need like some more stuff. Okay, so if you have this thing and you have like you just go like this, right? Like map option and just give us the apply, but apply doesn't have like any of these implicits and stuff. Um, it needs like all of that crap. Um, so over here, like both of these types like would match, right? String, string. Uh, we probably need some other, some other thing. Like that one, no? Maybe that one. Okay, we're abandoning the strategy. So what we're gonna do is we're going to cheat. So remember how um, remember how Gabriel did this thing was uh, was a derivative and stuff. So we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna go like this. Um, JWT access token config over here. Okay, so we're gonna steal it like that, and uh, we're just gonna paste it over here, and we're going to say that it's going to be. Uh, uh, local, right? Like that. Local. Okay, so now we need like a bunch of these imports to make it work. Uh, where is it? Like JWT, JWT access token config over here. Okay, so we need like a bunch of these imports now. Uh, and I always like forget which ones we need. Okay, so we're just gonna go like and like throw them all in because I don't care. Uh, not this one. Okay, so this thing compiles now. Okay, and so now we should be able to go like this. 
uh, local JWT access token key config. Okay, so at least this part is not go it's now going to compile. It should, right? So now it's just a type mismatch, but it but it but it made it work. Okay, so the secret thing, uh, I have no idea what it does, but if we go here, right? So this secret thing returns a config value. Interesting. So, like, essentially, like, what he does is he just goes like this, right? And then he does, like, a, you know, uh, power map n, and he shoves it into config, uh, config.apply. Well, we'll need to adapt it a little bit. Damn it. Okay, so power map n, and it's, like, a token expiration, and there's, like, JWT thing. So we're hacking, we're hacking a lot. Okay, well, we're going to fix it up like later. Okay, because I didn't want to do that today. Um, and so now we're going to produce a config with TE. And like this is where we're going to produce like the real JWT access uh, token key config by taking this like local one and like getting, getting out the secret. Uh, correct like that uh, like that okay so now we need the non-empty parallel non-empty parallel what else do we need for par map head um blah 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 Okay, how did he do it here? So what is what does he say that he said? Like how did this part of my band work? Non empty parallel was the only thing that he wanted. So what up? Also, where is he requesting that? So it needs to come from some import. Maybe this one. Why would it come from this one? Why would it come from this one? But okay. Also, like we're producing an F of, F of config. Like over there, he's producing an F of, he's producing like a config value. This is so weird. By the way, this is cute. It's coming from this one probably. This config value is a weird concept. So we just have a tuple where we load a bunch of the, like I, I probably should convert, um, I probably should convert this thing into a config value somehow. Right, probably like this. There's probably like some like pure, some some stuff like that. A thing blog, blog default, there you go. All right. Valley Secret is not a member of Cyrus Secret. What? So it's probably like this? No. What is JWT? Config value of... Oh my god. Okay. Um, we need to go like that. Okay. Um, and for now we're going to make it a def. I cannot imagine like a newcomer uh, being like like being fine with this stuff. Like this is like the types in these like uh, functional programming libraries these days are so crazy. This is why like in the end I really believe like like Zio would would win. I told beginners to use Zio, but doesn't seem production ready. Zio two is coming up. No, Zio is totally production ready. People use it in production, like for real. Uh, 
like ZO1 and, and they're migrating to ZO2. Like, look at this crap, like with how much like stuff like I need to deal with like right now, you know? So um, let's steal the types first, okay? So this is what we need to produce, uh, this. Like this, okay? So I'm gonna have like a like a like a private uh, depth thingy blah, and I need to produce a config of like of my config, right? Because like this app config is just a case class, right? For sure, right? Yeah, it is. Okay. So like this is what I want. I want this thing. Can we please have like? Can we please have that? Okay. So now it's good. Okay. So. We need to go like this, and we go. Uh, I just need to produce a config here, right? So I just need to go like this, and I just need to go like JWT probably value, no, or secret or whatever the hell is it's called. What is it called? Let's remove the secret thing. It bothers me. Like, I don't. I don't know what it does for now. Uh, that's not what I want. It's like this. Okay, so. Uh, type is match found an empty string required uh, JWT access. So, yeah, that's this is correct. So JWT access um, token key config like this. Okay, so we're happy now. So what does this secret thing do that like destroys everything? Okay, value dot secret is not a member of secret. Okay, so. Okay, so this produces like a special thingy. And how does he deal with it? Like, where is it? It's like one to three third one. So it's this one, token key. So it just gives it to app config and app config. Oh, okay, okay, fine, fine. Okay, let's see where it's used, right? And at the end of the day, okay, so it just goes like dot value dot secret, right? So there we go. That value, that secret. Problem solved. Okay. So now we have a config value of f of config. How in the world do we get out the config? Right. So where is this default used? Okay, it's used over there. Okay. And so now, oh, the load. This is what we need. Load. Right. So load produces a config. Okay. Cool. Finally. Okay. So now we're just going to go load. Okay. Load f. Well, well, we can now pretty much go back to this thing, right? Okay, and now it says, okay, so I couldn't find async. Okay, fine. You want async? There you go. Okay, and it comes from cat's effect. Import cat's effect. What? Could not find... I, I just gave it to you. What do you want? Not found type async. Is it not? Is it not in cat's effect? Yo, for real. It is in cat's effect. Cat's effect. What do you want from me? I'm getting angry here. It should be fine. Is there a typo? Like, what did I do? Import cat's effect. Is this a collision or something? Async. What do you mean not found file? Like, is is this a typo? Like, what? A S Y N C. What up? Cats dot effect dot async. Okay, do, do you see it, guys? Like, I don't see it. There's an F, colon, async. Let's delete this thing for now. What do you mean? Why would it be in kernel? Like, it should not need to be in kernel. Like, where does it come from? 
Is it because we hold up? I have I have a hunch. Yeah, so we didn't say that we didn't say that uh, our config library is going to have a dependency on cat's effect. That's the issue. Oh my god. Why me? It is so crazy, right? We don't have a dependency on cat's effect, but like importing cat's effect underscore, you know, compiles, right? Like this is crazy. Okay, so this is gonna go bye bye. This does not mean that it already compiles. Okay, by the way, we should have done this. All right, so it compiles. Everything here compiles as well. Let's move the unused imports. Um, gets effect like this. Okay, so do we really need all of that stuff? We don't. We need that. We do. Okay. Uh, do we need that? Yes. Uh, by the way, I'm not sure if we can go like this. Looks like we can. Okay. All right. So apart from the fact that this whole thing is ugly, um, it's fine now. Okay. Um, man, it's so late. One and a half hours, man. Okay. So I just want to clean this up real quick and I want to go and say, <laughs> okay so if you go to config like these are the names so we go like this and paste them like here um and delete comma and the same thing here and this is like te this is uh this is that, okay. Um, I'm gonna do something I'm gonna regret, okay? So I'm just gonna like whip this thing real quick to try it out. So, if we have cat syntax on, then we can map the right side of the tuple, okay? So we can, because it's a tuple too, we're gonna call map on it. And so like the right side, we can map to something, okay? So this is like the JWT thing, okay? And now we can like grab this thing to the end, you know, like do that, okay? And so now because of this, we have like JWT here, okay? What do you mean? Oh, no, no, no. I meant like, I meant like map, map dot. Oh God, Jesus. Map dot, map. like I told you I would regret it. Like this. And like, the only reason it's better, this is better is that because we can like remove this whole crap, right? It's because we can just say like change around like this thing. And now we can just say config dot apply. This is the only reason why this is better. Uh, it's like a little bit prettier. prettier. And uh, like async has a monad, right? Async is, yeah, it has sync. It has like the whole, the whole nine yards. And so we might also be able to do over here dot nested dot map, right? And so remove this, this crap. Right, and then in the end, just get like the value. Out. Okay, 
and um, like we can also do like like the only problem with this is that uh, I need a secret dot pipe into like that thing. And I believe actually in Scala 2 we don't need to do that, right? We can just we can just pipe it to config, right? Yeah, so this is like prettier than before, but the only issue with this is well yeah, the only issue is this is that like as soon as we have like a third value here, right? And then we cannot do this whole map thing. And so we would need to like rewrite all of that thing back back into this like ugly, 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 ugly thing. Right? Because like at the end of the day, like if you load a bunch of things, it's just kinda like be like this. It's just like blah. You know. Yeah. So so like this is the problem, right? Like I don't wanna I don't wanna leave it like this. Like this is um and this is why I wanted to, to like avoid avoid like this thing. Like if we can avoid this thing. Right. Um, let me try one more thing. I think I can do. Uh, we, we did it somewhere. What is somewhere with a JWT token? Uh, let me check something. We did it somewhere over here. I think it was here. It's not exactly the same thing. Yeah. So we 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 made like a hack, right? Because I just didn't know how to do like a, this config decoder thing. Like somehow, if we have like, do, have you guys used uh, Daryl before? Like it has an instance and blah blah blah, and then it has like even like blah. What is that? It has like a derivation which is like a macro instance of. Maybe I can just call instance. I think I can just call instance, right? Let's let's check this. So if we go like implicit val, blah, which is going to be a uh, what is it? Uh, what was the thing that it that this thing wanted? It wanted a, where's that implicit? Here, that as thing. It wanted a config decoder. Okay, so let's say that this is a config decoder for uh, like from string to JWT access token key config. Okay, so if we have that, so no. right no okay then we don't need like basically this whole thing right we can just go like this uh couldn't find implicit value parameter show okay we also need a show uh which is a show for for that uh And that's like a cat show. I found config.tie required, blah, blah, blah. Hold up. Token expiration. Oh, and the secret. Uh, we still need to, to like get, get the secret out. Um, can we do that? Value is not. Can we do map? Come on, we should be able to do map. 
a secret a value no Found token expiration blah 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 to config required string okay so this is now a string secret app well actually we don't need to, we don't need this whole dot secret thing, right right we just have this I, I don't get it I don't get the whole point was the secret thing right because like you're, you're passing through the whole code base and then you just say dot value right and then you just get it out like what's what's the what's the big deal um, anyway can we do some like derivative other instance Like, how does this thing work? Like, okay, so we should be able to go like config decoder dot, right? Something like this. Can we go like config decoder like this? Dot instance or something like that? Only new types instances can be derived. Oh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so we can do the new type thing. That's not a big deal. Uh, except for the fact that we now need to be okay so that's not that's that's fine uh we can just like um uh, yank it and go into package and go down like this and go like that and uh yeah we need to like throw this whole thing out okay yes and we need to go like this yeah yeah, I'm starting to like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like that. Alright, so if we go back here. Come on. It is a new type instance now. Not not found. Okay, so let's go like this. SBT says I freaking knew that I would regret this whole thing okay like this is bullshit now because like it is a new type now come on it is a new type over there. I'm sure we need something like refined or something like this, right? Like derivable. Refine. That's correct. Oh, this is the only, this is ours. No. Let's read the dogs of Daryl real quick. trying to do put that instance I just play around with this library I 
Oh, get it, man. It says only new types, and we do have a new type. Config decoder from string to A. And so this thing is a decoder.id. What the? Oh. How does this thing work? For ID of. Oh. Oh. So do I need to go like this? Come on. Oh man. why it's for ID and so it's like this and like this arrow should go away it's not like that. like it is a new type I just made it new type okay we're aborting this okay so this is how it was before and like the only thing that I'm gonna do is like should I remove the secret should I remove the secret remove no remove Anyway, so I'm just going to go like token expiration. And over here I'm going to go... Uh, yeah, JWT is fine. Okay, a little bit ugly, but what? Alright. Uh, yeah, so Gunweb, Gcan. Okay, so what I wanted to do today was like the main, right? Like, and we're been... 143. Okay, we we can still do this. I wanted to play with something else. Are you guys still here? Config decoder stream map control. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, but I'm um, sorry, I didn't see a message in time. Um, all right, five people are here. Cool. So um, I just wanted, like, real quick, to show you like this last boring stuff, which is uh, so if we open like one of these guys, right. Then we go No, we go into a new file. Okay. Source main scala and I don't see this anymore. Um dev inside you shoppy users off and I usually call it like dependency graph or just DI and in scala three we don't even need to have an object. Okay, so the i dot scala. Okay, and let's see if we can if we can get it to work. Okay. Okay, so it's gonna be called dependency. Well, just just the i. Okay, and so the whole purpose of it is to have like a def make, right? And like it will produce a controller. Okay, like this is the goal. Okay, and like the structure is always the same. It's like it's like controller, which is in like this one, you know. Dot make. It doesn't have make really. It does. Okay, so it's like controller dot make, and it always uh, just wants the boundary, right? Boundary. Okay, and the way you create the boundary is by going like you know boundary that make okay and the only thing that the boundary wants is the gate right so you go you know and you go like gate that make okay and now like the gate that make if you remember it wants like all of these other things like all of these things okay and so like we don't we don't have that one yet okay 
So this is going to be equals has config implementation. Well, we don't need to import make. Okay, and storage, storage, yeah, no. No, 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 storage Postgres implementation. Dot make, and this is like uh, uh, crypto dot make, whatever. And like tokens that make. And uh, okay, and so this one is going to be like now to do. Okay, so let's see, like, oh my god. So, comma, 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 comma. There we go. Okay, so uh, like that. Uh, not found value controller. Okay, well, that's bullshit because it's like right there. Right, it's like right here. Okay, so if it says that it couldn't find it, it means that we messed up the build. So if it find main. Now we have we have the delivery. Did we not import the build or something? What do you mean it cannot find it? Oh, typo. There's a typo over there, which means that there's a typo over here. Users. There we go. Not found value boundary. Here we go. A serious boundary. Oh yeah, it's called implementation. I used to call it boundary, boundary implementation. All right, so now it just needs like a bunch of like evidences. Okay, so this one is crypto, crypto implementation. This one is tokens implementation. Okay, so now it just says like, hey, I couldn't find like a bunch of stuff. So uh, let's just go like type them all out. Okay, so it was like, Jan UID. Notice that we don't need like any imports. Um, async. I right, like async is probably going to solve like most of the issues, right? I mean, this import we need, right? Okay, so has config is fine now. So what does this one want? Um, okay, this means that it needs it needs the resource, right? It needs like that thing. So we go like that. Okay. Um, so like that. Postgres. Sub Python man. So this is a skunk thing. Skunk session. Okay. So this one is happy. So this one. Okay. So this one needs sync. Really? I think it's already a sync. Can't find this as a monad. What? A sync doesn't have a monad? What? A sync is already a sync. A sync is already a monad. Because it's a monad cancel and it's a, and it's a monad error and therefore it's a monad. Type type what? Typo, where? I don't see it, wrong package. Oh, what? Are you talking about this thing that was like a long time ago? Why am I seeing these messages only now? Um, what about this one? Okay, so this one was like JWT expire as well. JWT expire. Okay, this is the only, like, we should not need to go like this, right? We should not need this. We should not need to go like this. Not found type monad. Like, this is weird. Like, crypto implementation is not even. 
Oh, 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 okay. It returns an F of crypto. Oh, that's annoying. Okay. So we need to create it. Yeah, so because of this, like this whole thing is going to return an F of controller. Right? Because we need to go like this. Whoa. Like this, right? And we need to go like flat map. And this is like the crypto stuff. And like close it like somewhere. And like that thing is going to be a crypto. Okay. And it needs the password salt. Okay. So uh, first of all, like this and like that. And um, so it needs the password salt. And we're going to solve this problem as well, probably at some point. Yeah. What do you mean? Oh. Okay, well that, like this basically shows us that we need to like uh, fix it. Password, solve. Fairly flat map is not, oh my god. Found controller for F, required F of controller. Hmm? Control and make returns a controller for F. Found controller for F, required F controller for F. Oh yeah, this controller thing is not is not a monad thing. No, it is. It returns an F of crypto. I'll give it a thing. Right, so like this crypto is just crypto. So now this is F of a controller. Like what, do you need like the app or something? No. So this improves the error message. Oh, we just need the map. Yeah, yeah, okay. So there you go. Okay. So this is our dependency graph. And like, this is one of those things that I said, like, you know, like, <laughs> I don't like the fact that this password sold, but we also need this. So man, it's so late. It's almost two hours. Yes, exactly. It's map, not flat map. Correct. Um, okay, so let's uh, shove this thing in and see how fast we can get rid of this uh, password sold. So uh, the first thing is to find out where Gabriel gets it from. Like I'm guessing it's from the config. Yeah, it is. And so we're gonna do like the same the same trick as we did, okay? Like as we as we like always did. So the first part is to to get it out. Um, oh, we didn't have derive show. Maybe that's why we had the issue was that, that that other thing. Okay, so the first thing is to to get it out, right? So this means that we need it in core. Core package, right? All right. So remember this DWT thing that we have been like messing around with. I believe that we should have just like added this derive show thing, and it would have like worked for us. Maybe we can try this some other time if we continue with this whole thing. Um. Yeah. Just go here and go like this. Why does it always like do it like this? Like that. There we go. Uh, I could not find. Okay, so this is another import. Uh, let me just. I always forget like these imports. Like, it's so annoying with these implicits. Hopefully, this gets better with Scala 3 and with tooling. Like, I don't remember. Like, it's something like refined. Like Cersei refined or some something. Yeah, it's probably no. It's it's okay. Show is from cats, so it's probably like import like cats refined or refined cats. No, 
okay so refined okay there's no help there's no there's no nothing uh no okay so like eu dot time pit refined cats is it like this yeah i get i guess it correctly uh let's source the imports also okay so we have this guy and now uh in our di uh we can uh do it like this all right and we can go here and like as a first step like that okay and so now we um we go and we put it in the config okay so in our uh in our gate well in our config right so for auth we have a config right so we just throw it over here as well okay and because of this in the config implementation we need to load it and so we will need to go through the same thing <clears throat> Um, first of all, we'll find this one, just like copy it, go back, paste it right here. And like, this is going to be now, uh, password salt. How do they call it? Yeah, password salt. Password salt equals password. So let's see, let's see if it works now. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. Let's see if it works now if we do this decoder thing. Implicit val. Um, oh. Yeah, exactly. Could not find like implicit decoder. Right, so it's the same deal as last time. Decoder for, you know, string and for salt. Right, so if we go like this, implicit val blah which is going to be good again config decoder config decoder string and uh what's it called password salt all right like first of all it's gonna compile right like this well not like this and we need to like get the value out right like this why do we need to do like dot secret here dot value is a okay do we really need to do this interesting okay so um and now we should be able to do this like config decoder thing that i tried before and do instance because now we have show and it still doesn't work okay so i don't i have no idea how to get it to compile so we're gonna do like the same the same trick over here right so we're just gonna go local uh what's it called password salt and we go to password salt and yeah it's secret not empty string so deal um so i go here a local password salt and uh, over here we're gonna do like this dot secret thing and we're just gonna like wrap it into uh into not into the global password salt like this Okay, so whatever. Um, like this is one of those things, like it's a hack, but it's not like some global hack, right? It's like a couple of private things here and I don't care. Um, okay, and so now that we have this, we can go into the crypt implementation, uh, which like, which implements like this uh, encrypting, okay? So we're just gonna move this password soul over there now, right? So, uh, uh, yank around like these guys you know go up and like say that we need it here um, right and so now like over there same deal all right okay so password sold like this it's called password how is it called value it means that over here we called it value as well no Oh, oh, okay. All right. So, which means over here, when we do like create or raise in our boundary, we're going to need the 
Um, but we'll go like gate dot encrypt. Should we do the same trick which is like passing the whole config? No, we shouldn't. That would, that's nasty. Okay, password sold. Password sold. So we go like password sold. And so this means that create arrays needs also. Uh, oh, that's interesting. So this is gonna go like config dot password sold. And this means that we need to load the config earlier, which kind of makes sense. Like you should load the config as the first thing. Okay. And so over here, uh, same deal, right? Password sold. And uh, let's go steal it from here. Okay, like this. All right, so now we change the sign. Oh, I remember why we did it. Oh, we don't need it here. Uh -huh. Yeah, we don't need it here. Exactly, it's, it's, it's over there. There we go, okay. Okay, just got scared there for a bit. All right. Uh, cool, so now uh, we should be able to go here, right? And so now we just delete it here and go like this and comma, paste, password sold. Okay, and uh, oh, damn it, I didn't notice this. Yeah, that's why I left it there. Well, it's annoying, but... It's annoying, but it's not a big deal. So we're just gonna like delay the whole thing. Right. Uh, what was it called? EC, EC underscore, right? And so this is gonna be like the thingy was the password sold. And maybe we can solve this problem like some other time. Like we now like don't have this here, DC. And now we will go and, oh, this is a private def. Nice, so I can just go like this as well. Okay. Not found value IV bytes. What? What did I change here? Hold up, what did I do here? How did this happen? How did I remove that thing? I pressed something weird. All right, so this is not ideal. I'm not super happy with that part that we need to do this thingy here. Um, and by the way, this is probably should be called like Cypher. Right. I'm not super happy that we need to do it like this, but. We could put this like into another component later, like the one that like just does the cipher thing. Because like like what what we solved now is basically we said that you know we don't need it here. now well 
right but even though like this is now solved like this actually creates a well it's not really a problem it's just that now it's a performance issue right like why would we do this every time you know like why would we run this thing every time So I think this is this is by the way this is why I uh, I always do like these things you know where I just like where I where I, like I have like my spidey sense and I'm like mm, maybe there's a re reason why I did it like this right so we're going to stove this stove this real quick right so GSTU is like basically um, like get stash you know like throw everything into stash okay. I think actually I just I just immediately regretted it. Let's pop it back. So I think what is better to do is to to revert parts of this. Okay, so I want to go like this here. So we went back to this like except for except for that like this thing is still gone. Right, so I want to leave it like as as part of config, okay? But I don't want it, want it to be like part of encrypt. So it's fine that we need we needed to you know to create it. By the way, I, I really like the fact that we renamed this to Cipher, okay? So ba -ba 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 -ba. yeah. So now we need to go to crypto, and we need to revert what we just did, right? So like that thing. And therefore, like that thing, and that thing, and that like broke the boundary. Come on, oh yeah, it broke the boundary, which is why, like this thing, right, boundary is above. So we don't need the password sold, so we can revert that, remove this, uh, like that, too much like that um like that um like that okay so we reverted like all of this nonsense and so the only thing that doesn't compile now is our dependent injection and what is up here what happened here oh can we do this can we do that All right. So, um, like, the only thing that doesn't compile is uh, where? No, there's no tip. Um, yeah. So the only thing over here is now we need this password sold. However, we already know how to how to get the config. Okay. So. What? Cats rewind a little. What do you mean? <laughs> okay, so now we should be able to pass the password sold without having it over here, right? Because we can just load the config, right? Like this. Well, not like this, like that, right? And so now we can flat map. And so now we have the config. Okay. Well, it's it's not the config, actually. It has, it has config. It has config. Okay. And so we go like has config, okay? And now uh, we can go um, has config dot config. Okay, that gives us an F. Okay, so we need to go has config dot config. Flat uh, map again. So this is going to be the config. Okay, we're going to rewrite this to for comprehension. Just a sec. Okay. So this gives us the config, and so now we can go like config dot password. So, okay. So, uh, what? Why? Value flat map is not a member of has config. Oh. Really? Oh, it just has config. Okay. Yeah, okay. 
So we can just go like this and then we can just do dot config. Okay, dot config. And then uh, flat map, right? And so now we have the config like this. And now we need both. Oh man. See, and this is what I meant, like it makes dependency injection a little bit annoying. Okay, so first of all, has config is like has config implementation dot make make okay because we need to put it over here, right? And and now we go like this has config dot config flat map, and now we have config. Can I remove this one, one of these, and like that. So now we have like one flat map and we have one map and we should probably rewrite this to a full comprehension. Okay. Uh, again, like maybe it's maybe it's better without without it. So let's compile it. Okay. So for now, we just kind of like we can actually throw it into the last commit, like that. Okay. So let's see if it's better with a full comprehension, right? So if we go like this, four, and like this is the config that we need to get out, which is like has config dot config, and now we're going to yield. Well, you can also make that thing, right? Okay, so there's also like crypto. Right, so now we have crypto. And now we can yield like that thing. Just like that. Now we can like throw like these things out and like one of them, two of them. Okay, so is it better? I think it's better. What do you guys think? Convict crypto and then just creating the controller. I think it's better. Now we can also like, we can also do like this. Um, can we do that? No, we can't. Like that. Right. So now we have like one for comprehension, so we don't need like this curly brace. Yeah, so we're getting a has config because we need the config because we need the crypto. And then once we have everything, we can assemble our controller. The only thing that the controller needs is the boundary and the only thing the boundary needs is the gate. And the gate has like a bunch of these like things that are going to compile in parallel, right? And like, but it's like super important that, right? So we, we're we're going to have like a similar dependency graph for every use case, right? So this is just the auth use case. And they're all going to be like super small like this, super tiny without like any like weirdness like about implicits and whatever, like just a little bit, you know? And so usually they will need like just like the session, you know, some session and that's it. Like all the other things, like the things that come from the config, they will be like this, like maybe this will change because because like ideally you would do like what Gabriel did, right? Where he goes like this, right? So he loads the config for the entire application like once. Right, and so like this thing he uses over here where he assembles the entire application, right? So he starts like the first thing he does, like he he loads the entire config, the same as like he would like create like all of these sessions and stuff. And then he just gives like this big thing um, to everybody. And and probably like once we, like if if I decide to finish this, uh, this series, then like in the end, we're probably gonna finish doing something like this. And then we're just gonna have like, a mapping of case classes. Uh, but for now, it's fine. So this is our DI, okay? So uh, 
we're fine like this, right? Like I'm super happy with this. I'm I'm only not happy with the fact that it took uh, two hours and fifteen minutes. Um. Okay, so we need to go to diamonds, and we need to check out the commits, and we need to see that on day five, which is a Friday. We did like all of that stuff. This series takes way longer than I thought. Yeah, so you guys can have a look. Oh man, let's check how many of you guys are still here. It says five. Okay. Oh man, I don't know what, what to do because like I wanted to... Like I said this in the beginning of the stream, I don't know how many how many of you guys were there in the beginning of the stream, but I, I, I said that like the plan was a serious what to do this in like five days. So it's obvious like the estimations are hard. And I wanted like on the weekend to make a video about it, you know, to say like, hey, we rewrote this application, now it compiles much faster. Um, now that it took, it took longer, I can no longer do this. And so I need a video, I need to create a video about like something else. And um, I wanted to play with something else here on stream, sort of like learn it and then, and then do it tomorrow. Um, but that didn't work. And so maybe I'll stream tomorrow again. And because you guys are still here, you're gonna get a preview about what it is. So there's this thing called uh, Source Graph. Uh, they basically do um, search stuff. How many, how many of you know Source Graph? Just write something like, I know it. So it's a universal code search. And uh, I know two people, not personally, but I know two people who work there, so I kind of know that it's a good product. Uh, one of them is Olaf, who pioneered the whole Metals and Scala FMT thing. And the other guy is called TJ Reeves. He's a big, like, uh, NVIM guy, also live stream and stuff. And they both work for Sourcecraft. And so it has been on my to-do list for a very long time to, like, play with it and, like, make a video about it. Uh, it's, it's, like, free. Like, there is a, there is a free tier. You know, blah, blah, blah. You get like a bunch of stuff. Um, I never had a chance to actually play, play with it. And the plan for today was not to play with it. This thing is that like GitHub re uh, recently, well, it's still in beta, uh, released like a similar, similar product called GitHub Search. I'm not sure if this is what I was looking for. This is probably not what I was looking for. So in any case, this is like a private beta and I got accepted. So um, uh, over here, it's called, okay, I guess it's like cs.github.com. Like I wanted to go and play with it. cs.github.com. Okay, so this thing, right? So it's basically a uh, competitor to Source Graph. And so I wanted to play with it. Like, I have no idea like what I can do with this. Like, okay, so let's go like, like this thing. Like owner, uh, dev inside you. Okay. Okay, so dev inside you. And now path. And now let's do like that. No, it's column. Like that, okay? Like, I don't know if I have dot .nix in there. Let's do like Scala. Okay, so it's found Scala stuff. And so it's sort of like this thing. And uh, yeah, I don't even know how to play with it. And I cannot promise this, but maybe we're going to play with this tomorrow, see like what we can do. Uh, maybe play with source graph and then maybe I can make a video about it. Yeah. 
do you guys have any any questions about what we did today or any other any other feedback or, or whatnot don't forget to like this video again like I keep saying this um, yeah apart from like if you guys don't have anything else to chat about it's getting late we did like more than two hours so I'm just gonna wrap this up and um, yeah that's it so let's do like uh, one more song yeah so two minutes of Q&A and stuff and then I'll just go uh, Kriti Shore mentioned the work around for Scala to 12 when you use to 13 or 3 what do you mean? what do you mean? Christian Chash, are you still here? If you are, thank you for your support. I just pl pledged a bunch of money. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, I don't know from the top of my head, like uh, like which features are not in. I don't remember. Like to 12, it's been such a long time. I think... I think like partial unification became the default, like became enabled by default. Oh yeah, a couple of things are like backported from, from Scala 3 to 213. Oh yeah, there's there's the standard library, right? They rewrote the standard library. Oh, Scala Util Chaining. What about it? Do you, do you want to see like how how to use it? Oh, 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 that Scala Util Chaining thing is is just super, uh, so you want to work around for Scala Util Chaining? Oh, that's super tiny. Like, is this what you want? Like, please confirm it before I go and then like write this code. It's just like a tiny function. You could just jump in and then see the code. It's it's uh, super easy to implement. I wonder why I have like such a delay actually, because uh, like over here it should be like ultra low latency. I wonder why it's less like this. Yeah. So uh, look, it's uh, it's it's, uh, it's very true. Um, uh, well, actually, we can just go into the REPL. Well, no, if we go into the REPL, we cannot like go into the implementation. Um, let's create like an object main thingy here and just go like this. Okay. So we need to come up with an example. <laughs> Two minutes. Wow. Interesting. Um, it can't be two minutes, man. Anyway, so we need an example. I'm getting sleepy. So let's say you have a thingy, right? And like, I don't know, like int comes in, well, no, like string comes in, and I don't know, option in comes out, right? And the implementation is like string, like to int option from standard library. By the way, this this might have been added in Scala 213, I don't remember. Um, does it have, yeah, anyhow. Okay, and so now when you do like, you can either do like print line, 
um, like thingy of like hello world or you can do like hello world and then that pipe into thingy right it just like gives you like a similar ergonomics to like map and flat map and stuff so f for this one you need to import like scala util chaining right and like we don't even need to jump into the implementation because like the implementation is going to be this right it's just going to do this thing for you that's all right look <laughs> it's just going to call the function for you <laughs> so it's not a it's not a big deal there's also tap right so tap looks like exactly the same it's just that like they they called it you right it, it it's exactly the same it's just that like after it does like that thing it doesn't give you the b back it just get, oh i'm really really super super sorry yeah sorry 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 yeah i, I told you like i'm getting sleepy yeah so uh let's go back to this thing okay yeah so let's say you have like this thingy you know this function and then you can just print line thingy of hello world or you can import scala usual chaining and then you can do hello world dot pipe thingy okay and if you jump jump to pipe well it will it will just call the thingy for you right so it's super trivial right if you go to pipe well it's just going to call this function for you and like as already mentioned it just gives you like a better ergonomics for like map and flat map and they also added tap which is exactly the same thing it just like after it calls the function it like ignores its result type it ignores its result and just returns returns that thing for you so this tap thing is like useful when uh like when you for example over here you know let's uh let's grab this thing and put it like at the top right so let's like tap is useful when you want to print line stuff right so let's say you're like somewhere like in the middle of this and you just want to see like what uh you know what the config is over here right and so you go to like the place where it's used and over here you just go like dot tap right and over here you have your config and then you would just like print line print out config right so the result of print line is unit but like after it does that right like after it does that over here right it will throw out that unit because you don't care about the unit and it will actually return you that thing that you called it on and you called it on the config right so you can like continue the computation like this by the way a long time ago I, I wrote a library i didn't port it to scala scala 3 and i and i never actually advertised it and i'm not going to start now like one day we're going to rewrite it on on stream for scala 3. i did a similar thing for for print line it, it's basically like a tap and print line combined so if i go real quick to temp and i create like a new project for um for scala 2. Well, no, 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 no. Uh, okay, hold up. I take temp. Okay, if I go like this, and I'm just gonna call it delete me. Okay, and actually, hold up. I wanna like throw this out. Um, okay, like this. Let's compile this whole thing. By the way, I didn't I didn't show you guys the dependency graph. Right, like after we added the main. So super quick. Um, okay. So now we have our diamond, right? Core at the top, main at the bottom. This thing. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna close this and um, uh, we're gonna go to delete thing. Delete me. Come on, Z temp. Okay, and delete me, and we're gonna open. <laughs> yeah, if you if you were impressed by uh, by tab, by tab, you're gonna you're gonna love this thing. Uh, please don't please don't ad advertise this thing that I'm gonna show you in a second. I I wrote it just for me. So I don't want to be responsible for like bugs or whatever. Like it has tests and whatever, but still. Come on, Vim. Like something wrong with my Vim. Come on. Hmm. 
what is happening? Like, what? yes, whatever. Okay, I can move. I can move. We can move. Okay. So, uh, over here, I believe I have like Skaladex. Yeah, Skaladex uh, spells. Yeah, spells from Agile Steel. Yes, that one. Uh, yes, that one. That one. Yes. And let's see if we can paste it. Paste it? We can't. Alright, so we need to find it manually real quick. GitHub. Uh, GitHub.com slash Agile Steel slash spells. Okay. So it's a super tiny library um, and it has uh, it has like a website here, right? So it's like this and it has a wiki. Like if you're interested, like after this uh, stream, it has a wiki, like go, go check out the wiki. Okay. So it's like spells as in like, you know, magic spells. Okay. So it was designed in such a way that you would have like, uh, let's say you have your diamond or whatever, and the very, very top, you have like some project with a bunch of utils and you would have like a package object in there. Um, let's, let's wait for metals to, to finish this whole thing. So we go to like dev inside over here and we're going to say like new Scala file and we're going to say package. Okay. And over here you would just like mix in like spells.spells, .spells, which is like an all you can eat trait. Okay. So if you jump in there, you're going to see this is like a, just a trait with a bunch of things. It's sort of like cats and stuff. And it's like, it's built with a cake pattern in mind. So you can grab like only, only what you need if you want. And so now that it's like, super at the top like in the main you have a bunch of implicits like like for example you can just do some like green for example let's go and start uh start sbt real quick like i started writing it when i when i found like ANSI codes so i really liked uh ANSI codes and so i wrote i started with that Okay, so you can do like things like this. And um, I kept playing around with it and I created like a poor man's debugger. So it's sort of like tap and print line combined and it has like some fancy rendering and stuff. So let's say that you have like some code, like I don't know, like list one, two, three. And then you go, I don't know, map into, okay, so this is gonna be like your integer. And you're going to map it into into a tuple of like this is going to be like your integer and over here you're going to have like i dot um seconds or something like from from scala concurrent duration right import like scala concurrent uh duration right so let's say we, let's say you have some code like this right and then you do like uh to map okay and then you do like uh dot values and then you do like to list again, right? Or something like this, right? So you have this code and you want to see like this, these like intermediate steps. And so you would do like this like tap print line, for example. And by the way, I included tap as well. So you don't even, um, you don't even need an import. Uh, and I also overloaded print line. So you kind of have like this issue here. Um, which is why I told you like, don't use it in production because you're going to have like things like this. What the hell? Did I not include tab? Tab is not a member of what? Hold on. 
I remember I included like these things like pipe and tab in there. Maybe I maybe I wanted to, but I didn't. Maybe I wanted to, but I didn't. Um Okay, so like instead of like doing like these tabs, uh, I created a thingy that I called X-ray, right? And the idea was that you can just like in inject them like everywhere you want, and it would do like this fancy thing. Okay, so it's basically just like a fancy print line, uh, wh what idea? Yeah, so in, in any case, like it just does like a fancy print line and it has like a, a type class for like custom rendering and stuff. And so it gives you like these things and it's configurable. You can like remove like these values. You can like pass it a description. Like for example, you can say like, this, uh, this last one is gonna be like something like final one, you know, and then, um, and then the last one is gonna have like the description over here. And so like, because it knows how to like, um, render things what was the first one let's uh let's clean this or some stuff like that okay so this is like the first list you know list one two three that's how it looks like and you see like okay at the position zero you have the one at the position one, you have the two. At the position two, you have the three. And you see, okay, this is the class. And like, this is the type, the thread, and hash code. And this is like how, how much time it took to execute. And um, and then it was a list, was a tuple, you know, was int, and final duration was three elements. And this is like how they're rendered. And then it became a map. And you see that there's like a specialization for a map three, you know. And, uh, and then it was an iterable, and the final one was like a list again. Okay, but was the finite duration. And uh, I also have like a couple of helpers, like, uh, like I think like there's like x-ray, x-ray if, and then what you get is like this x-ray report. And I have no idea why we don't have any auto-completion, like metals are somehow dying. But you could say some like duration, um, man, I need auto completion. I, I don't remember any of that stuff. Like, I don't understand why why metals is being so weird. Yeah, exactly. It's just an alias for him. Like when you start this BT. Uh, over here, you know, it gives like these aliases. Like R is just one. Okay, so we, we're getting this like weird issue and it, remember like an hour ago or something, we, we restarted bloop. So we're just gonna go like B exit and over here we're going to say like connect to build server. Sometimes it gets confused. Okay, so now it's like one for 13. Yeah, I do need a rest. So now it's gonna compile everything and then we're finally gonna get auto completion. Like I'm waiting for this thing over here to appear. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now we should have auto completion. Okay, so yeah. So like there is X-ray, where is auto-completion? Come on, it was just, just here. Okay, we can do some like X-ray if value equals map of one, one second or something like this. All right, and then if we go to like run, Right, then we see like the, the first x-ray. We should have seen the second one, right? So we see, we see, why do we see so many?
We see one, two, three, and final. Why do we see all of them? They cannot possibly be equal. It's like it completely ignored this thing. I have not used it for years. What the hell? I have tests for this stuff, like it used to work. Let me try something simple. One dot x ray if value equals one. Okay, and yeah, if we go like two. And we don't see it. What what the hell was it? Was it some incremental compilation thing? And uh, yeah. Anyway. So one of the cool things that you could do, like I remember like um, playing around with it, is that you would do like thread sleep in like three seconds, for example. Right. And then you would return the one. Right, like this. And then you could say duration and like, I have no idea what's wrong with metals. Like, do you guys remember how to compare duration? I think I think it just had the comparable stuff, right? So we can just say, if duration is, come on. If it's like smaller than like three seconds, right, then print it out. And so it's not going print to print it out because it's like longer, right? So, but if it's like, if it's into four seconds, then we're going to see it, right? Because we see that it took like three seconds and a couple of nanoseconds. Anyhow, I'm freaking done here. So I'm gonna close this thing and we're gonna delete it because it's called delete me. So this thing is pushed. And uh, yeah, I'm totally done for today. It's like 10.30. How many of you guys are even still here? Five. Okay, if you have any questions you need to wait until tomorrow, I cannot promise that I will uh, stream tomorrow. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I need a lot of sleep. Okay, peace.